course, Zara is a fictional figure. Zara is a 27 years old woman who recently got married. Her full name is Zara Azad Ahmed. Together with her fiance, they decided to go and certify their marriage legally. Now, naturally, they went to the next court they found in this city, and which falls under the Ministry of Justice, of course. Arriving at the uh, court, they went straight ahead to room number two. And there was an employee in the room that asked them to provide identification. Now, they went and copied all the documents, civil ID, passport, national ID, information card, food coupon, and handed it over to the employee in the room. Then the employee asked them to go and do a blood compatibility test in one of the governmental labs, which falls under the Ministry of Health. Arriving at the lab, there was a lab assistant. Uh, again, they asked them to identify themselves. So, civil ID, passport, national ID, information card, food coupon, the long list. Now, they did, and the lab assistant went and took blood samples from both of them and asked them to come back in two days. Now, two days passed by, Zara and her fiancé went back to the lab and got the results back, all clean. Now, they went again back to the court, to room number two, they handed over uh, the documents to the employee in the room, then part of the routine in the building is to go to a couple of other rooms, then finally, they went in front of a justice in a courtroom, and their marriage was legally and officially certified. Now, the new family needs to be registered. So where to go? The Ministry of Interior, the Office of Civil Affairs. And again, arriving there in one of the rooms, there was an employee who asked them again to provide identification. Now, they again identified themselves, copied all the documents, and handed it over to the employee in the room. Now, after a couple of other steps in the same building, their new family was registered. But the new family now needs food coupon. So they went to the uh, office of the food coupon, uh, which falls under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Now, arriving out there, they were again asked to identify themselves. So they did, and after a couple of other steps, uh, now the family got the food coupon that it requires. Uh, the longer list is uh, much more than that. There's much more to do actually in the real uh, life process. But I'll stop here for the sake of time and out of courtesy. Uh, it's worth mentioning that in these uh, processes, um, there might be um, some digital systems and digital services. It's not entirely paper-based. So if, uh, Zara is very lucky. Uh, these offices might have databases, uh, digital systems to keep the citizen records and the, um, and the information. Of course, looking at the picture, the most critical question that rises is, why do you need to identify yourself so repetitively? Why these organizations cannot rely on each other's proof of identity? Now, to answer that question, we need to first ask ourselves, what is really unique about Zara? Her name? Well, many people are named Zara. Her full name? Well, many people are named Zara Azad Ahmed. So apparently, name is not a unique attribute of Zara or of a person. Uh, shall we combine this with something else, such as date of birth? Well, many people are named Zara Azad Ahmed and happen to be born on the same exact date. Okay, so. Why can't we use one of those documents uh, that was used along in the process, such as civil ID, uh, national ID, passports, things like this? Well, something like the civil ID, or Hawiyah Hawal Madani in Kurdish, it's an old, not solid document. It has collision problem, which means that multiple people end up having the exact same number. As for passports and national IDs, unfortunately, there are two problems. Number one, uh, there aren't um, many people who have passports and national IDs. Not everyone has them. And number two, they are not accessible. There's no way we can digitally utilize them. It's also worth mentioning that in lack of a universal uh, ID for Zara, 
these systems might generate their own local identifiers for Zara. So Zara's ID in the court could be something like one, two, three, four, and in the Ministry of Interior's uh, uh, civil affairs could be MZ20. And as you see, arbitrary random numbers that there isn't any uniformity to them. OK, then going back to the problem of identification and uniqueness, well, it becomes apparent that biographical attributes of, of a person cannot be used to establish uniqueness. Biographical attributes means things that may change, such as your name, your date of birth, your gender, your address, your etc. Well, then how can we identify a person uniquely? Well, biometrics, the things that do not change, your immutable characteristics, such as fingerprints, irises, those are the unique patterns in your eyes. Now, accordingly, we came up with the idea of setting up a digital ID number that provides your uh, biographical information, but it's backed by your biometric information. Now, the uh, digital ID number that we propose at the department is a 13 digits number, unique to each person, verifiable through biometrics. Now, this is all managed by a software, a piece of software that manages all of these things. Of course, let's now go back to the previous example and try to enroll Zara in our system. Let's assume that we have collected Zara's biographical attributes, such as name, gender, date of birth, and her biometric records, such as fingerprints and irises, using, of course, special scanners. So assume that Zara has put her hands in, uh, on, a, on a special scanner that in, we then we are able to uh, collect her biometric records. Now, we fed all of these information, the biographical, the biometric, we fed it to the new system that we have created, and it responded back with a digital ID number. This is Zara's digital ID number, 13 digits. OK, going back to the previous example, let's now update all the IDs that we have seen before with Zara's new ID. OK? Now, you might ask what has changed so far. Well, a couple of achievements have been unlocked out of the box. Number one, Zara's ID in all of these systems have been uniformly updated. That means that all the records in the core system, in the Ministry of Interior, in the Ministry of Health, in the Ministry of Trade and Industry, are all now attributed to the exact same person. Number two, we have created the digital ID system, and now all of these systems centrally communicate with it. This is important because now Zara needs to identify herself using only one digital ID and a set of all the other mess and documents that uh, she had to provide before. And this is also critical for a very good reason. If Zara decides to change one of her biographical attributes, such as name or date of birth, or age or gender, well, we will again be able to track back to the same number through biometrics. Number three, and more importantly, the means of communication has been established between these systems. In the past, there was no way these systems could communicate with each other because there wasn't a sense of a uniform, universal ID. Now there is. Well, again, looking at the same picture, what strikes me again is that what stops us from bringing all of these services to Zara's smartphone? Well, as a matter of fact, nothing. Well, the digital ID number will allow us to do exactly that. If we give Zara a citizen account where she could log in and log into a governmental portal, she can fill out a marriage certification application and click Submit. Done. That's her entire, um, the entire request flowing from one system to the other, from one department to the other department, seamlessly, without any effort, and automatically, because Zara's identity is now verified by all these systems, and also because partially all of these systems communicate with the exact same of, uh, data source, which is the digital ID system. Now, Zara skips the headaches of bureaucracy, saves a lot of time and gets back results much faster and with more efficiency. 
Now, here's are the benefits of uh, digital IDs um, and enabling us to do digital services, minimization of data silos, where you have multiple, a bunch of other services uh, that have their own data isolated. There is no way they can be communicated. Now, the digital ID allows us to do that. More importantly, it enables visibility and transparency and allows the government to tackle corruption. And also, it allows us to create citizen-centric services. Yet, uh, with all of these great um, things that digital IDs and digital services that uh, allows us to do, yet certain services, such as marriage, still needs and requires you to be physically present. Because things like marriage is about consent. Uh, you cannot get married using a button. You cannot get divorced using one. That's a dangerous button to be there. So, yet things like property registration, transfer of, uh, transferring uh, the ownership of um, a, a personal asset still requires you to be physically present in the place. But that's first to assume now that digital ID will change the way we live. Thank you.